And what is happening, everybody? Welcome into our 2024 SEC opponent reveal show here on the Locked On Network. And we're excited to talk about all the opponents. The schedules are out for 2024. We don't know exactly what weeks you're playing, everybody, but we know who's playing home, who's playing away across the entire Southeastern Conference. So without further ado, let's welcome in some of our analysts, our hosts, across our Locked On SEC shows. And we welcome in, first up, Stephen Willis host of Locked On Ole Miss, does a tremendous job. Welcome in uh, Clint Chamblin of the Locked On uh, uh, Bulldog Show, talking all things Georgia. Andrew Leone coming in here, host of uh, Locked On Gamecocks, covering South Carolina. Uh, we've also got Caroline Fenton, host of Locked On LSU. Josh Helmer, welcome to the club, my friend. He is part of the Locked On Sooners podcast, so Oklahoma, new to the group. Welcome in Andrew Stefaniak, host of Locked On Aggies, of course, the AM Aggies. Uh, we welcome in also Eric Kane, host of Locked On Vols, jumping in with us. Man, we've got we've got too many people here. John Miller, host of Locked On Mizzou, coming in as well. Luke Robinson, host of Locked On Bama. I know he's uh he's gonna be crying here in a little bit after all uh, what Bama's schedule looks like. Who else are we missing? We've got uh, Lance Daw, host of Locked On at Kentucky. And we've got, of course, our buddy Zach Blackerby, host of Locked On Auburn. So, guys, welcome in. Guys and ladies, welcome in. We've got a, a big slate to get into here. Uh, the SEC Network, they started off with the Texas and Oklahoma teams because they're the newbies. So, I think that's where we're going to start, Josh, with you, Locked On Sooners. Oklahoma's slate. You get uh, home games against Bama, South Carolina, Tennessee. You get the neutral side game against Texas and Dallas, and then you are at Auburn, at LSU, at Ole Miss, and at Mizzou, Oklahoma. Welcome to the SEC. What do you make of the schedule? Well, first off, it's great to be with all of you. This is, uh, for Sooner fans, a day that uh, we've been kind of just waiting, waiting, waiting on for so long, and uh, now to see the realization that it's actually here is pretty exciting. Uh, just to quickly summarize some of my initial thoughts, I would say for Oklahoma – and for Sooner fans, they they kind of got what they wanted. They wanted either Alabama or Georgia definitely at home. And as the leaks started happening early this morning, kind of felt like, okay, if Texas is getting Georgia, good chance Oklahoma is getting Alabama. And, uh, and then the the storylines, obviously, with Beamer at South Carolina, with, uh, with Tennessee and Heupel, and the road trip, the Death Valley road trip. If, if there was one road trip that everybody wanted in year one, it was that one to LSU. Yeah, and it's kind of interesting because last time OU and LSU played, it didn't go so well. A guy named Joe Burrow hung about 65 on him, so uh, we'll see uh, how they respond this time around. Uh, one quick thought, though, John, you or Josh, y'all kind of – you lose a home game here because you got to go play Texas over in Dallas. You know it's a great rivalry, but kind of get messed over here, you lose a home game. Yeah, uh, you know, I guess that's just part of the – the process here for Oklahoma with it being an eight game schedule instead of a nine game schedule. It is a good illustration. I think just from the, the sooner fans perspective of why Oklahoma fans, I think, you know, initially a lot of what I got in, in Norman and from OU fans was, ah, we don't care. Eight, nine, no big deal. I think that narrative is going to quickly change now that they've seen, Oh, wait a second. Uh, because of that neutral game versus Texas, we only get three sec opponents in Norman. So there's some disappointment there. They're sure. But honestly, Folks are so excited just to see this thing that they're not they're not super focused on that right now. Yeah, it's it, it just it, closing on Oklahoma real quick. Is there one game that you just circle? I mean, outside of the Texas game, one game that you think that uh, man, everybody's either going to go to this game or everybody's going to be tailgating for a home game. Which one do you have circled? It's got to be. I mean, if you if you give me just one, it's the home date versus Alabama. But I think if you give me two, which is one at home, one on the road, it's it's Alabama and it's LSU. Not just because of the the Joe Burrow history, uh, the Peach Bowl history you'd like to forget as a Sooner fan, but obviously a national championship game uh, that Oklahoma fans don't remember too fondly versus LSU. So those two, but the, the home date versus Alabama, I mean, my goodness, that's ex this is exactly why Oklahoma fans wanted this thing to happen. <laughs> He's Josh Helmer, uh, voice of Locked On Sooners. Um, I want to transition, trying to figure out what school we're going to go to next. I mean, why not start with the champs? They're going for a three-peat. They may be going for a four-peat by 2024. Clint Champlin, host of Locked On Bulldogs. And uh, Clint, as we look at Georgia's schedule, home games against Auburn, you get to preserve that rivalry. Of course, the neutral site game against Florida and Jacksonville, you preserve that one. 
Home games against Tennessee and Mississippi State, so you get to play the Vols still. And then at Bama, at Kentucky, at Ole Miss, and at Texas, you get to go to Austin for the first time. What do you make of the Georgia Bulldogs schedule? You know, this was rumored out there, that Texas game. It was either going to be A&M or Texas, and it looks like clearly it is Texas. It's going to be interesting to see how they acclimate coming in the SEC. Uh, but, yeah, that Bama on the ticket, we are all for it. We can't wait for it. I don't think there's any Georgia fan that is sad about that. And then, yeah, keeping the Auburn as well as Tennessee and Kentucky, those are some kind of historic things, and we already have people in the works that have storied games and, and memories of that. So I like keeping those as well as the new exciting big time time games is there one game you just look at in, in your circle and that and say that one can make or break our season uh i mean yeah, yeah this slate is rough but again the one that i'm going to be looking to and talking for the next years to come is that is that bama game look it's going to be uh, talked about quite a bit talk about prime time talk about selling tickets and selling revenue and network that bama game is going to be huge texas i'm not too worried about uh, no no offense texas fan but i'm not too worried about sark and, and what they got going there but yeah that bama is going to be marquee all the way through and i cannot wait for it yeah go ahead and start selling tickets to that one right now uh um, right now and the, the question is will saban still be at bama in 2024 to, to go against kirby we'll see let's uh, go- let's start that going come on <laughs> get that engine going Clint Chamblin, host of Lock on Bulldogs. I want to move over to the uh, the Ole Miss Rebels. We'll welcome in Stephen Willis. Uh, Stephen, we look at Ole Miss, and the schedule kind of leaked a little bit earlier this afternoon, but home games against Georgia, Kentucky, Mississippi State, of course, the Egg Bowl preserved, uh, and then Oklahoma coming into Oxford, and then road trips at Arkansas, at Florida, at LSU, preserved that rivalry, and at South Carolina. Looks like a manageable slate here for Ole Miss. What do you think, Stephen? Yeah, it, it's not the best case scenario for Ole Miss, but it's close. I mean, you avoid Texas, you avoid Alabama, you avoid Auburn, it, those games, and you just have LSU, which you have every year. Georgia, like I said, nobody's going to fault you if you lose a game to the Georgia Bulldogs at this point. And you're trying to get to the playoff in 2024. They, Ole Miss can't blame the schedule whenever it comes out. They might can blame something else, but they're not going to be able to blame the schedule because there are wins on the schedule. Uh, is there one what, that you look at that you circle? I mean, obviously the the Georgia game is a big one. You get them, you get them in Vaught Hemingway, so that's going to be fun. But is there one game you look at and say that one's going to be brutal? Well, uh, the Georgia game in Vaught Hemingway is going to be brutal. But the game that I'm looking forward to is Oklahoma coming to the Grove for the first time. Um, and being able to experience that a little bit. And Texas came in in 2012 and saw that. So we've done that. So Oklahoma doing that, because I don't think we played them since 99. And before that, that we may have not have played them. So it'll be really interesting to see what the Oklahoma Sooners can bring to the conference. Kind of a Grove party welcome to the Southeastern Conference. It's going to be so fun because you're going to get uh, Oklahoma and Texas fans for the first time getting experience a lot of these atmospheres. Of course, Texas is going to Tuscaloosa this year, but – you know, those fan bases, they're going places they haven't, you know, maybe have never been for some fans. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Let's switch over to our friend Caroline Fenton, host of Locked On LSU. And uh, Caroline, uh, with LSU, we knew that Bama was probably still going to be in the schedule. So their home games, they're against Alabama, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt, and Oklahoma. So they miss out on Texas. They get Oklahoma coming to Baton Rouge. And then road trips at Arkansas, at Florida, at South Carolina, and at A&M. Uh, this kind of looks like, a, you know, outside of the Oklahoma, this seems like almost a normal type schedule for LSU. It really does. And I was very anti the one plus seven model because I, I wanted the Ole Miss game every year. I wanted to play for Florida every year. I wanted to play Alabama every year. I wanted to play Texas A&M every single year. And our schedule, apart from not playing Auburn for the first time in over 30 years and not playing Mississippi State, looks pretty darn close to what it normally has ever since the SEC created divisions, you know, 30 years ago. And the Oklahoma draw is interesting because I view Texas and Oklahoma with LSU, their storylines there. Texas to open the 2019 season, and it was very heated. The Joe Burrow jersey through a cannon. And then Oklahoma to bookend the 2019 season. So there's a rivalry there. There is, you know, a whole lot of heated discussion between both of those fan bases. But it'll be really exciting and fun to host Oklahoma in 2024. I I don't hate the schedule in the slightest. 
Yeah, and, and LSU, of course, beat Oklahoma in a national championship about 20 years ago. Is there, a, of the road games, is there one you're really looking forward to? I mean, keeping the swamp, you know, going to the swamp's always fun, but going to South Carolina is one LSU doesn't typically go to. Yeah, it's it's kind of road games as usual at Texas a and which is always a hard place to play on the road at the swamp, which is always a hard place to play. L- LSU typically plays there every other year. And then at Arkansas, of course, those are places that LSU is familiar with. At South Carolina is very interesting because go back to the 2015 season, LSU was supposed to play at South Carolina. Unfortunately, there were devastating floods that went through Columbia. So LSU played that game at home. So LSU has not played on the road at South Carolina in quite some time. It's something new. I'm excited to see what Shane Beamer is building at South Carolina. So that will absolutely be a fun one and a little bit of variety and a little bit of shake up from what we're used to as LSU fans. Yeah. And as we know, LSU fans travel and they travel well. They'll be taking over some box cars that week with the tailgating. Uh, box let's get cars into a little Mizzou talk. Yeah. Oh, of course. <laughs> uh, let's talk a little Mizzou with our buddy John Miller, host of Locked on Mizzou. And John, I hate to do this to you, man, but uh, your ex-girlfriends, they're following you. Oklahoma and Texas coming to the SEC uh, to play Mizzou. Let's look at Mizzou's schedule. They get home games against Arkansas, Auburn, Oklahoma, and Vanderbilt, and then road trips at Bama, at Mississippi State, at South Carolina, and at A&M. John, what do you think of Mizzou slate? I think it's fun, first of all, just from a fan's perspective. It's a really different schedule. You've only got two teams from, I guess, the old SEC East now, you'd call it. You've got five from the Old West, plus Oklahoma, an old rivalry rekindled. I think it's a really fun schedule, but from Missouri's perspective, I also think it's a fairly navigable schedule as well. You've got Arkansas at home. That's a game that Missouri, by the way, won at home last year, so sorry, Arkansas fans. Yes, we're, we're going to keep that rotation going, I think. Sorry, guys, but no, I'm just kidding. But seriously, you know, Zach Blackerby, you know, the Auburn game was crazy last year down there. I think that's probably a toss-up. We like seeing Vanderbilt on the schedule. Even the road stuff isn't that bad past Alabama, in my opinion. Yeah, at, at A&M will be uh, an interesting one. It's, you know, a lot of the old Big 12 rivalries or, or, or games that were in the Big 12, we're getting those back, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Is there one – game i mean obviously that at tuscaloosa game is is pretty brutal but is there one game you have circled that goes man that could make or break our gear you know it's it's there's not really one i think it's all three of those road games are incredibly important of course we're you know two seasons out at this point it's hard to forecast that much who knows where jimbo fisher is going to be in a couple years you know (laughs) south carolina appears to be on the way up but you know you said that about eli Drinkwitz two seasons ago too be interesting to see what happens with Beamer there. I just think it's those three road games other than Alabama. Yeah, we might be talking about Urban Meyer's first game in College Station as head oh coach of God. A&M or something. <laughs> I don't know. It, it's crazy, but we're talking a year out. A lot of things can change I love before it. we get there. I love the speculation. He's John Miller, host of Locked on Mizzou. Let's switch gears and talk with uh, our guy Luke Robinson, host of Locked on Bama. And uh, Luke... As we look at Alabama slate, we already knew a couple of the games had leaked out this afternoon, but uh, obviously home game in the Iron Bowl, they preserved that rivalry with Auburn. Home game against Georgia is the one I grabbed all the headlines, and like we just talked to Clint about, that is going to be huge. Home against Mizzou, home against South Carolina, and then at LSU, preserved that rivalry, at Tennessee, at Vanderbilt, and at Oklahoma, and again, preserving the Tennessee rivalry. Uh, what do you make of the slate, Luke? Uh, I think it's the most difficult of all of them that I've seen so far, especially when you add in Alabama is also going to Wisconsin uh, to start the season or at least the second game of the season. Then, you know, it, I, I like it, though, because you got the 12 game, uh, 12 team playoff. So I think that uh, playing a tougher schedule is actually going to be a good thing for Alabama. Um, you know, I wish one of the Mississippi schools had been on there. I, I could sacrifice the Missouri or South Carolina game to keep one of the Mississippi schools on there. Mississippi is a fertile recruiting ground for Alabama. So I like to involve that state as much as possible. I don't remember the last time Alabama didn't play a Mississippi school in their regular season, but overall I'm happy with it. It is a fun slate. It's really fun. If you're not an Alabama fan, because just about every single game seems like a marquee matchup. I mean, with the glaring exception of at Vanderbilt, but I think they had to give the Vanderbilt game on the road in Alabama. When you see Oklahoma, LSU and Tennessee on there. Yeah, no doubt. They had to give him some kind of uh, relief there. Of those three, though, Luke, at LSU, at OU, and at Tennessee, if you're being a realistic Alabama fan, I mean, it feels like there's a loss in there, right? But, it, like, if I could tell you go 2-1 and one in that stretch, you would take that, right? 
You know, I, I think uh, most of the time I would over the, considering these last 15 years, I wouldn't, I'd say, you know, three and over nothing, but uh, I think I, I would do you one better and say, put Georgia, the Georgia home game. And then those three road games and say, all right, would you take three and one? Yeah, I'd take three and one in those four games. Um, and, and I think that's being a little bit more fair. Yeah. It will certainly be interesting to see uh, what, what happens here. And uh, uh, again, it's uh it's some fun games. I mean, this is what's the most important thing. We know it's all about money, and that's why we're sticking at eight and not nine and all that, but uh, certainly some fun games there. And uh, Oklahoma, I mean, you guys get to go to uh, up to Oklahoma and see what that's all about. Well, I went there in 2002. It was an awesome game. It's hard to believe Dennis Franchoni was the coach then. We've had like seven coaches named Mike since then. But a uh, cool story. I, I got to rent a car and uh, they ran out of cars. So I got, they gave me, they said, the only thing we got left is a banana yellow Mustang. And I got to ride that around. So uh, nothing like being an Alabama fan in Norman, Oklahoma, and a banana yellow Mustang. <laughs> Certainly looking forward to that. I hope you get that uh, same car this year when you go up there. Uh, Luke Robinson, host of Locked on Bama. Let's slide over to, uh, a and M. Let's go out to uh, talk with Andrew Stefaniak, host of uh, Locked On Aggies. And uh, Andrew, you get home games against Alabama. That that one we uh, we were wondering if that would stay on the schedule. You get South Carolina, Tennessee, and Texas. You guys win that battle of uh, fighting who's going to get home field advantage in that one. And then road trips at Auburn, at Kentucky, at LSU, and at Missouri. What do you make? Uh, or I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong schedule. Uh, you get home games against uh, Auburn, Florida. Let's reset this. A and M, you're at your home against Arkansas, LSU, Missouri, Texas. You're at Auburn, at Florida, at Mississippi State, at South Carolina. My apologies, we're uh, doing this thing on the fly. What do you make of A and M schedule? Well, first thing I'm going to have to say about it is feel pretty good. You know, two of the toughest games in conference play, LSU and Texas. You're going to get to play at Kyle Field. You're not going to have to you you miss out. You dodge Georgia and Bama, which is exciting. And I think flat out, it's a schedule where the Aggies can have a good season. And the biggest part about this season is that historic 2022 class is going to be in their third year. They're going to be developed. That's going to be a season I think the Aggies could have a great year. And the Lone Star Showdown is back. And the first time where it's going to be back, it's going to be in Kyle Field. Lots to look forward to with that ball game. Yeah, and certainly it sounds like uh, the athletic department got their way. They were trying to put it out there. Hey, look, they're following us to the SEC. We should host them in their first year back. And certainly that one's going to be a lot of fun. Again, AM hosting Texas, hosting LSU, Arkansas, Missouri. Uh, which one of the road trips uh, scares you the most? Uh, playing in the swamp is always scary because of, you know, the atmosphere there is pretty great. Uh, it's, it's a tough place to play, but I'm not high on where Florida's at currently. What I will say is that game at Auburn with Hugh Freeze in his second year on the Plains, that one scares me a little bit, just knowing the fact that I'm I'm high on what Hugh Freeze is going to do at Auburn and the fact that it's at one of the craziest atmospheres in the SEC. That's a game I'm a little concerned about. Thanks so much, Andrew, host of Locked on Aggies. Let's slide over to uh, – let's go out to Columbia – uh, South Carolina, Andrew Leone, host of Locked On Gamecocks. And Andrew, we look at South Carolina home games against LSU, AM, Ole Miss, and Missouri, and then road trips at Alabama, at Kentucky, at Oklahoma, and at Vandy. A good mix of tough and some doable games. What do you make of your schedule? Yeah, Chris, there's certainly a good mixture here of both familiar and unfamiliar opponents here for South Carolina. Obviously, the Gamecocks are not used to playing LSU, Ole Miss, and Alabama. Alabama, they haven't played, I believe, in Tuscaloosa since 2009. And then, of course, you've got the Oklahoma Sooners. There's a lot of headlines to be made right there. Shane Beamer was coaching at Oklahoma before he came to South Carolina to, be, to become the head coach here. So certainly be a lot of interesting headlines there with that. And then you get Missouri, Texas A&M, Kentucky, and Vanderbilt. Those have all been opponents that you've had annually on your schedule every single year for the last 10 years or so. So – a little bit of a good mixture here, but I think Gamecock fans, uh, I think the guy look forward to sort of the unfamiliarity here with the majority of the opponents they've got on their 2024 slate. It's uh, it's an interesting one. Again, LSU going out there at Alabama. I wonder if, uh, you know, maybe you can get Alshon Jeffrey as a grand marshal for that game or something and go uh, bring some, <laughs> some good juju out there. But uh, wh which game do you circle and say that one can uh, can make or break our year? 
Ooh, make or break our year. I'm going to go with Ole Miss at home. South Carolina Ole Miss games have been quite good, honestly, since the two teams have started playing in the SEC. I believe that each of the last four or five games have been decided by two scores or less. And, of course, there was an absolute barn burner back in 2020 during the COVID year, which uh, Gamecock fans might thank Ole Miss for being South Carolina that year because it got Will Muschamp out of town and brought Shane Beamer into Columbia. So I'm going to say Ole Miss. But, again, a lot of really good games to look forward to. You could probably throw in the Oklahoma game as well. And keep in mind here, we're, we're talking no divisions anymore, so it doesn't matter if it's a SEC East or SEC West game. That's out the window. None of that matters anymore. So it's going to be fascinating to see how this thing plays out in 2024. Let's uh, slide on over to uh, the state right next door. Let's go to Knoxville, Tennessee, and talk with our buddy Eric Kane, host of Locked on Vols. And Eric, you already heard the Alabama contingent crying a little bit about their schedule. What do you make of Tennessee's schedule? Home against Bama. Florida, Kentucky, and Mississippi State, and then at Arkansas, Georgia, OU, and Vanderbilt. I guess the biggest thing for me is the biggest storyline. This kind of looks like what Tennessee's schedule in 2024 was supposed to be originally. Uh, you were going to be playing Mississippi State. You're going to be playing Alabama, Georgia, Vanderbilt, Florida. Oklahoma was on the schedule yeah. in, in 2024. So um, from that respect, it's, it's kind of like, all right, well, they didn't really do a whole lot, but um, you get you get the big three, of course. You knew Tennessee was going to play Alabama. You knew Tennessee was going to play Vanderbilt. Uh, Georgia is still on the schedule for 2024. It's going to be a road game. I like the fact that Kentucky's on the schedule. It's another one of those rivalries for Tennessee, Battle of the Beer Barrel, so uh, that's good. At Arkansas, you were just there in 2020, so you know that's going to be uh, – uh, it feels like you were just kind of there, and that's some bad memory for uh, for Tennessee fans. And then, of course, at Oklahoma – Man, the storylines, they're already being written right now. Josh Heupel going home. <laughs> We're uh, getting a, a lot of folks in the comments. Appreciate all you guys for watching us live on YouTube and, of course, the uh, podcast version of this across the Locked On Podcast Network. Eric, uh, one more thought on Tennessee's schedule uh, of the road trips at Arkansas, at Georgia, at Oklahoma, and at Vandy. Which one, if you could only make one of them, which one are you making? Well, if I can only make one of them, I'm going to Oklahoma. I'm going to Norman. I think that'll be a... A great atmosphere. I've never, I've never been there. Never seen a game there. I think it'll be a big time matchup. Obviously, uh, you're right. It's hard to project, you know, a year in advance, kind of where these two teams at right now. But they should be continuing to climb, and at least you hope for Tennessee's sake that's the case. But again, Josh Heupel going to Oklahoma. Um, it's going to be a lot of national chatter, a lot of conversation about that storyline. So uh, if I can only make one trip for sure, it would be to Oklahoma. I'll, I'll hopefully be at all of them. Uh, but I would definitely pick Oklahoma over Fayetteville because I've already been to Georgia and Vanderbilt. If Eric's smiling a little bit more this week, it's just because Tennessee keeps kicking butt in every sport. They're uh, postseason <laughs> and postseason success in every sport. I don't know what's going on there in Knoxville right now. Uh, he is Eric Kane, host of Locked On Vols. Let's slide on over to Auburn. I've been seeing a lot of folks in the comments going, where's Auburn? We want to hear from Zach Blackerby, host of Locked On Auburn. So, Zach. Let's get you in here and talk a little bit about, about Auburn's schedule. Home games against Arkansas, OU, A&M, and Vandy. And then, of course, road games at Bama, at Georgia, at Kentucky, at Missouri. Uh, some brutal games in there for the Auburn Tigers. Yeah, little surprise Texas isn't on here. There's a lot of smoke that Texas may be a possibility, specifically coming to Jordan-Hare Stadium. We're not getting that. We're getting all Oklahoma, which will be fun, which will be fun, but – I think looking at it, you know, Texas A&M hasn't played well at Auburn, so you got to love that. Vandy's Vandy. And, you know, Arkansas uh, has certainly um, certainly been a winnable game, especially in Jordan-Hare Stadium. And, look, you know, if you're going to have your toughest games on the road with that Alabama at, at Georgia, you know, I, I think that certainly works out for the Tigers. And I, I think when you look at, at Kentucky and at Missouri, uh, all, all of a sudden I, I think that's those are both winnable as well. So I, I like this draw. For the Auburn Tigers. If I could tell you, you could guarantee one W on that schedule. Which one would you put that W next to? Other than Vanderbilt? Yeah, yeah, but like not not realistically. Like you get to choose. We absolutely win this game. Which one uh, would you put that next to? Ooh, probably Arkansas at home. Uh, just because it's, I mean, just the way that that series has gone. I mean, Auburn's kind of had Arkansas's number for, for you know, pretty much the past decade or so. So, I think that one, and I also think uh, I think Kentucky and Missouri on the road are both gettable, too, for sure. Come on. You're supposed to say the Iron Bowl. That's the one we want to win more than anything. Come on, Zach. Uh, I, I understand it's the most important. I don't know. I don't know how good I feel about that. But, hey, we're a year out. Maybe Peyton Thorne has started his Heisman ascent, 
and uh, all of a sudden, you know, he's ready to be a thorn in the side of uh, the rest of the SEC. He's hedging already, folks. He's already hedging for 2024. I'm ready to get hurt again, Gordy. I'm ready to get hurt again. (laughs) Let's head on over to uh, Lexington, Kentucky and talk with our guy Lance Daw. He is host of uh, Locked on Kentucky. And uh, Lance, an interesting schedule for Kentucky. They get home games against uh, Georgia, so you get to keep a little SEC East flavor there. Home game against South Carolina and Vandy. Home game against Auburn. And then at Florida, at Ole Miss, at Tennessee, and at Texas – uh, it's a rough road stretch there for Kentucky, but what do you make of the schedule? Yeah, you mentioned the former SEC East here, and that's probably the thing that I focus on first is the fact that Kentucky keeps every former SEC East opponent outside of Missouri on this 2024 schedule. And Chris, I'm mostly looking at this schedule through the lens of what this 2024 Wildcat team is going to look like primarily what the quarterback position is going to look like for Mark Stoops and the Wildcats. And they're going to be breaking somebody in new and looking at this road slate. You know, it doesn't really inspire a lot of confidence that Kentucky could go out on the road and get it done. Uh, Like you mentioned on the road in Austin against Texas, Florida, Tennessee, Ole Miss, uh, all very, very tough games for the Wildcats. The home stretch. I think you've got three winnable games there, excluding Georgia. You can definitely beat Auburn, South Carolina and Vanderbilt, but it's going to be tough Looking at next year's team, I'm sure there will be more fun schedules down the road, but this is a it's an intriguing one for sure, Gordy. But I'm I'm kind of concerned as to what the Wildcats may look like uh, in road games at Austin and road games in Knoxville and Oxford, because uh, with the new quarterback, you know, you never really know what's going to happen. It's interesting uh, looking at the, the schedule for, for some of these other schools. And uh, we're missing, you know, a couple of our hosts. Uh, so I'll just run through Arkansas real quick. They have a home slate against LSU, Ole Miss, Texas, and Tennessee. And then road games at Auburn, at Mississippi State, and at Mizzou. And, of course, that AM game is neutral field in Dallas. So Arkansas, actually, they, they only have to play three true road games. So they finally get a little of a, bit of a break. And then for Florida, home games against Kentucky, LSU, Ole Miss, and a and But then they still have to play Georgia, of course, uh, at at Mississippi State, at Tennessee, and at Texas. So rough go there for the Florida Gators. I'll kind of open up to you guys as a panel uh, down the stretch here. Is there any rivalry games we're missing? Is there a game maybe you were hoping your school would have had that uh, isn't on your schedule for 2024? You know, the one I I think it actually has something to it just because Beamer is – Look, he's dorky and he's weird and he's just bizarre. I get all of that. But the dude gets people to play for him. And I actually have a lot of respect for him. I say he's dorky, but I would love to see Georgia keep playing them. That was one of the things that was exciting just because Beamer is that guy that has them going in the right direction. Uh, And uh, Shane hates losing to Kirby and Kirby loves needling him on that. And so that is one game that in the future I'm looking forward to. And I I am sad to see it's not here right now in this schedule. Yeah, what was that score last year, Clint? I bet you do want to keep South Carolina. I want to keep that thing. Let's just roll that back out. (laughs) (laughs) Andrew is shaking his head as host. That was that was the exact look that Coach Beaver had. We all got to do that game. That was exactly on the (laughs) fifty-yard that walk over. Just let let me ask Josh, host of Locked On Sooners. You're you're new to all this. Was there an SEC opponent you were maybe hoping to see that's not on your schedule? It's split in terms of how Oklahoma fans feel about it, but you know, obviously there's been a lot of discussion around here. Oklahoma State, is Bedlam going by the wayside? Is that a rivalry that you've lost? The regionality of Arkansas felt like, to me, it would be a natural replacement in time for that Oklahoma State game. So to see that uh, there's no trip to Fayetteville, I'm a little bit disappointed about or you're not hosting Arkansas. That seemed like something that would be an obvious rivalry in the making. If you wanted to make one for, you know, three permanent opponents moving forward, if and when we get to a 366 model. So that would be one that would jump out for me. A&M because of the history as well with the the Big 12 there. So those two, but look, Oklahoma fans don't have a bunch of big a bunch of complaints there's not a lot of there's not like a layup game on this schedule there's no Vanderbilt there's Dorothy we're not in Kansas anymore but I don't think Oklahoma fans are upset about it at all yeah just kind of glancing at it I think Alabama's got a tough draw I think Oklahoma's got a really tough draw uh there's some easy ones out there as well let me throw it to to Caroline Caroline you guys get Oklahoma but you don't y'all are still waiting on that COVID year return trip for Texas they remember Joe Burrow beats them down in 2019 they were supposed to come to Baton Rouge in 2020 little surprised they didn't use this opportunity to have Texas come to Baton Rouge. 
And that game had a whole lot of juice to it. I remember, so, you know, Texas was wearing, you know, the real DBU T-shirts back when LSU really could claim that they were DBU. We've kind of lost that uh, that title over the last couple of years. We're getting it back. But so that was spicy. And then the LSU players went over to the Texas sideline. They were drinking their water, pouring the water out in the field. It got spicy. And I think that was the the first game, at least for me, and I think a lot of other LSU fans may agree in that 2019 season, where at least I thought, okay, this team's good. Like, th- like Joe Burrow is good. This team is going to win a whole lot of games this year. So I am a little bit bummed that we're not going to be able to kind of recreate that magic now that Texas is in the SEC in Baton Rouge. But I'm looking forward to hosting Oklahoma. I think that there is an obvious rivalry there just geographically with Texas and then also going back to that 2018 season. But I'm excited to start building that with Oklahoma as well. I'm bummed to not see Auburn on the schedule, though. That's a historic rivalry that's just always seems to be a, a weird game every year. So I'm going to miss that with Auburn. I'm a little surprised it's not on there. When, when I was doing my prediction show, Caroline, I had yeah. – Auburn playing their big three rivals. Adam playing Alabama, Georgia, then LSU was kind of that third one. So I'm with you. I'm bummed to see this game off the schedule. And also it would have been Auburn's turn to host. So I think that kind of stinks. But also it's just been fun. I mean, something weird happens every time they play. So I'm with you. I I hate that that game's not on there. Yeah, the earthquake game, the barn burning burning down. I mean, there's been so many great moments in that rivalry. and uh, LSU burning our trees. Yeah, a lot of crazy stuff. Well, you know. Sorry. (laughs) <laughs> and hey, I mean, hey, was, that's on us. <laughs> we were going to get them if you didn't. So, I mean, it was going to be one of us. There it is. Alabama there and LSU is. Thanks, working Luke. together. Yeah, it's a <laughs> partnership that goes back years. Yeah. Well, that's two right. things we hate Auburn and trees. Yep. There you go. Luke, Iron Bulls uh, right up y'all's alley, then. There you go. Luke, host of Locked On Bama. What's it, if there is one game missing from your schedule, what is it? All right, look, I mean, I talked about the Mississippi teams not being on there. But, again, because Alabama – I mean, look, it, it, there's plenty to talk about. First of all, Alabama and Mississippi State are the two closest geographically uh, of all the schools in the SEC. Secondly, the Lane Kiffin-Nick Saban dynamic is so much fun. So, I thought one of those would have been uh, a great game. But, honestly, the, the games I'm missing – has Georgia been to Texas A&M yet? I mean, are they ever going to go there? And again, I'm not saying that's just an incredibly difficult game. I'm just saying Texas A&M has been in this league since 2012 and Georgia hadn't been there. There's something wrong with that. Uh, Auburn, no Auburn LSU uh, is is bad to me. No Auburn Ole Miss is a huge missed opportunity. I mean, if the Nick Saban, Lane Kiffin dynamic is fun, what is Hugh Freeze and Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss and Auburn and everything? That is tremendous. I think that was a missed opportunity right there. Yeah, certainly. And uh, guys, it's going to be a lot of fun. Again, we'll see how the schedule shakes up when we're playing all these teams on what dates and all that. But uh, at least we know the opponents and you can kind of start planning your travel schedule around the 2024 SEC schedule, adding Oklahoma and adding Texas to the mix. Uh, Before we wrap things up, we do have our guy, John Neighbors, probably the most asked about guy in the chat. People all looking for the Arkansas perspective so we got to get locked on Razorbacks host John Neighbors in here and John Arkansas schedule home games against LSU Ole Miss Texas Tennessee at Auburn Mississippi State Missouri and hey you get a neutral site game against A&M so only three true road games what do you make of Arkansas's draw well uh first off I want to make sure that everybody understands that on uh, June 14th of 2023 the year of our lord was the first time that the SEC had an opportunity to screw over Arkansas completely in their schedule and they actually didn't do it. It's actually an incredible schedule. Like I I was sitting here thinking that it was going to be just a a murderer's row like it always is, kind of like what they did in 2020 with the COVID year, where they're like, hey, here's eight games of the SEC, but we're going to give you Georgia and Florida on the road. Why not? But they actually really did a good job with it. I'm going to give credit where credit is due. You have a home schedule that is about as good as you could ever ask. I mean, you're talking about LSU, Ole Miss, Texas, and Tennessee all at home. I mean, what could be better than that? Uh, when it comes to marquee matchups, when it comes to being in Fayetteville games, you know, none of this War Memorial stuff, none of this Arlington stuff, and we'll get to that in a second, but you have four marquee games against four marquee opponents, teams you have history against, and in some cases, even a little bit of a rivalry. So the home schedule is great. And even the road schedule, which is Mississippi State, uh, Missouri, and Auburn, it, it's very doable. It, it's a very like navigatable type of schedule to where those are the opponents you would play anyways if it was the old SEC West, which is weird to say now. But you have that and then throw in Texas A&M still being in Arlington. 
still know how that game is and still know that that is a, a kind of a crazy thing. But either way, this you could not ask for a better schedule. I think of all the teams that got uh, scheduled, whether it's you talking about easiest games or marquee games, I think Arkansas was one of the teams that had the benefit of the doubt, especially in the fact that they're one of two teams that doesn't have to play Alabama or Georgia in the schedule. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's finally <laughs> happened. Maybe Arkansas can finally navigate through an SEC schedule for once in their life. Yeah, you're right. I mean, going back all through the years, this is the first time I, I can remember an Arkansas fan going, hey, we've actually got a navigatable schedule for once. So we'll see what results with the Hogs in 2024. John Neighbors, host of Locked on Razorbacks. John's looking pretty comfortable. He's probably got his bird dogs on, and that's where we want to end things today, reminding you guys about going and checking out our friends over at Bird Dogs. They make you look so good. Stretch khaki shorts designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. The shorts do the exact same thing as the Lululemon brands do, but they fit way better, uh, fit better than regular shorts that are made of that stick, restricting cotton. Uh, they fixed the issue. They invented cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki but stretches, so you get a way slimmer fit without having a sacrifice movement. And uh, they got that anti-stink sweat uh, wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long. They're versatile. You can wear them to the to the ballpark, where I'm on a date, where I'm to work, whatever you do, go check them out at birddogs.com slash locked on college. You want to make sure you go to the website birddogs.com slash locked on college because that's where you're going to get the free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college. Get that free Yeti style tumbler. You will don't will not want to take your bird dogs off all summer long. We promise you. This has been our uh 2024 SEC opponent reveal. I'm Chris Gordy, host of Locked on SEC. Thanks to our panel. And we'll be watching SEC football throughout this year and get ready for that 2024 schedule.